And thanks to James for joining us today uh, as the head of uh, business development at Subquery, a project that very uh, integral to the Polkadot and Web3 ecosystem. We are eager to understand more about your work. So could you start with a brief introduction of yourself and the role uh, at Subquery? Yeah, thank you very much for having me, Kristen, and thank you for having me on um, and sharing with your community, um, Pokeboard. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, my name's James. Um, I'm based in Singapore, but my accent is from New Zealand, so I apologize if I speak too fast. Um, mm -hmm. But it's a pleasure to be here today. Um, I do a lot of work at Subcore, I do a lot of small things. I really just help out my team where I can, whether that's talking to customers or partners, um, or helping the development team to decide what to build next, or helping our UX designers work on our next version of the website. Um, I do a lot of various small things. Um, and yeah, that's, that's kind of what I do, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Moving on, Subquery, could you briefly describe uh, what sub Subquery is and what problems it solves in Polkadot ecosystem or in Web3? Yeah, absolutely. So Subquery is one of those core infrastructure projects. Um, infrastructure projects are very popular these days because obviously um, you need good solid infrastructure to build a large Web3 project. And Subquery is one of those critical pieces of infrastructure. So let's start with what it solves. Um, the first point is around um, the way that data is stored on a blockchain. Now, you'll know, Kristen, as well as I do, that every um, successful business in Web2 um, owes its success to the ability of its business to, to control and manage data. So um, projects that um, can, can process a lot of data and show that in a fast way to users succeed. Mm -hmm. And that would be the same in Web3. Now, the problem about Web3 is that the data is stored in a very difficult to process way. So data is stored on a, a blockchain in Web3, obviously, we know that. You submit transactions to the blockchain. Um, any interactions you do with a decentralized application will go to a blockchain. And uh, the problem with that is blockchains are a very inefficient form of storage. Um, to visualize what it's like, imagine um, you're reading a book and every page stores information about what has happened in the last 12 seconds or six seconds. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you want to ask that book, give me the last 10 pages that this character appeared on, you have to kind of go through each book, mm -hmm. uh, each page one by one. And it's the same for blockchain. If you want to ask the Polkadot blockchain, give me the last um, 10 transactions that I've made from my account, you have to go through every block sequentially back in time to see if you're in that block. You can't ask it those kind of questions. And those kind of questions is where an indexer comes into play. An index is very useful for that. And the whole point of an indexer is to scan the blockchain. And whenever it sees some information that you might need or you might want, it will process that information or organize that information and it'll save into a database. And databases are formats that we've optimized for this kind of thing. Um, and what, essentially what that means is that we provide a tool that any team in Polkadot, on any parachain or in Polkadot and Kusama, um, can use to build their own decentralized applications. And they can build those applications faster um, and make them look better, act better, um, be more responsive, and provide a better user experience to their users. Yeah, that's very insightful. Um, speaking of its inception, what inspired the creation of Security? How did the journey begin? Yeah, excellent question. So we started working on Subquery a little over two years ago now. I think we released our first version in February 2021, um, which is a long time ago when, you, when it feels like a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, but time flies when you're working with three. Um, essentially, we were working for another project called On Finality, and we mm -hmm. were talking to all of these different parachains across the ecosystem, talking to teams like Moonbeam and Akala and Asta and Fala and Bifrost even, and, and they were all saying to us, look, you know, you guys are doing great service, but what we need, we really need an indexer. An indexer is the one thing that we need to build some applications that we need to build. They were having issues with their 
development because mm -hmm. they didn't have a high quality indexer in the mm -hmm. Polkadot ecosystem. And so the main thing when you're building stuff for customers, um, especially as an infrastructure project like us, is you always have to listen. You mm -hmm. always have to listen to exactly what your customers are wanting. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to take that, um, that information on. And we kept hearing the same thing. And mm -hmm. so one day we decided, yeah, we're going to build an indexer. We're going to call it Subquery. Mm -hmm. It's going to focus on Polkadot. Yeah. And uh, two years later, this is where we are now. Yeah, and fascinating. Uh, in such a competitive space, you know, <laughs> in blockchain, what are the unique features or services that set Subquery apart from other similar platforms? Yeah, so there are... There are kind of three types of indexes we find out there. First one is some teams, they're really unlucky. They didn't realize the indexes out there and they've built their own. They've gone off and they've built their own indexer, which is a waste of time. It's a huge amount of effort. Trust me, I know how hard it is to build an indexer. Mm -hmm. And they've gone off and they've built their own thing. They've hacked it together. It's just working behind the scenes and they're running their own indexer for now. So that's one type. And we come along and we say, look, you don't have to worry about that. We've built one for you. Um, we can give you the best one and you don't have to worry about developing anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's one aspect, one type. The second type is centralized indexes. So these are the kind of ones like Covalent um, mm -hmm. and Unmarshall. These are indexes that specialize in general data. So if you just want standard information, like you want a standard list of NFTs mm -hmm. or a standard list of transactions, you might go to these people and ask them for that list because They've indexed that standard set information and they're mm -hmm. selling that um, to anyone that wants it. They're great. They're fast. They're really good. The problem is, is that if you're building your own application, you need better than a standard set of information. You want to build a unique application that's better than your competition. And mm -hmm. so for that, you want to have your own data that is mm -hmm. unique to your application. And so the standard indexes are great, but they're not perfect for when you're building your own application. And so that brings me to the third type, which is um, mm -hmm. kind of flexible indexes like us. Um, we focus, um, so there is one other flexible index you might have heard about. Um, it's not really in Polkadot, but it's a big gorilla in the room. It's called the graph. Mm -hmm. um, we operate very similarly to the graph. In fact, mm -hmm. we kind of were inspired by them when we started. The main difference between us and them is that we have put a lot of focus into non-EVM chains. So mm -hmm. Polkadot, for example, every Polkadot parachain we support, but we also support other chains like Nier and Algorand and Cosmos, mm -hmm. um, all these other non-Ethereum chains. Mm -hmm. um, when you also look at the differences, we um, have got some key ones in terms of our focus on performance. And we've also given a lot more features to developers. The graph restricts you from what you can do we've unlocked that so you can do whatever you want. You can bring in data from a different API or combine it with something else. It's very flexible. Um, and so we've got that balance of speed and flexibility and easy to use. That's the aspect that we focus on. Yeah, that's remarkable. Uh, with regard to achievement, uh, what, are some, uh, what are some of the major milestones Subcurry has accomplished so far? Oh, that's a hard question. We've been going for a long time. Um, <laughs> so there's many, many, many of, of these achievements that we could point towards. But I think ones I'm most, um, most happy about. Um, firstly, when we first launched, you know, just getting to that point mm -hmm. of the first product on the market back mm -hmm. in um, February 2021, that was a big milestone for us as a team. Um, we got that out there. And um, then the next milestone was when we um, raised money from investors. Um, we've raised over three different rounds. We've even had a community round where our community has invested in the private sale. So we want to make sure our community is involved. Um, another big improvement is indexing Polkadot is one step, but we've now made Subquery flexible in terms of it can index and support up to nine different layer ones right now. So it can do any Polkadot parachain. It can do any Cosmos zone. It can do Algorand. It can do Near. It can do Avalanche, Flare. Uh, Ethereum, Mainnet, um, Polygon, and BNB. All these different chains we've gone through have added indexing support. That was mm -hmm. very hard, took a lot of effort for each of them. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's a big achievement to build one of the um, biggest multi-chain indexes with widest support for these different chains. Because our developers, our customers are 
going into all these different chains. They want to build a multi-chain application, and we want to support them where they go. And the final achievement I want to point towards is just happened in the last couple of weeks. We've launched a decentralized network. It's kind of a pre-magnet called Kepler. Um, and just today, we started sending real-world traffic to indexes um, around the world. Um, and so we're very proud of, of Kepler in, in terms of our process to decentralize the subquery network and the subquery product. Yeah, impressive. Uh, looking ahead, what are the uh, future plans for subquery? Any upcoming features or services we should, we should uh, anticipate? Yeah, well, firstly, our main focus right now is we always so we always focus on improving the performance of subquery, mm -hmm. adding new features to the subquery, and adding new chains. So that's three things you'll never stop seeing from us. Is we're always trying to improve it and make it better. Mm -hmm. In terms of big next things for us, so Kepler, our canary, our kind of canary network or pre mainnet has launched. Um, it's a big milestone, but you'll be able to see soon we'll be announcing all the different things we're enabling and the progress of our um, of subquery of Kepler in terms of decentralizing the network. And then later on this year, we're hoping to do a, a public sale um, and launch a mainnet. That's going to be a huge um, achievement, a huge event um, in Polkadot. Um, and we're looking forward to that, that big kind of public sale, that big um, network launch, and launching the kind of the next generation of these decentralized um, infrastructure stack. Yeah, intriguing. Um, it's it's always a challenge to innovate. So could you share some of the hurdles you've faced while developing subquery and how you overcome them? Yeah, absolutely. So I think that one thing to remind you know teams out there is that building a decentralized or Web3 project is, is hard. Um, it requires a lot of time and effort. Um, and you have to kind of work with other people. So I kind of told the story of when we started subquery. We started it because we were talking to different teams across Polkadot, and we listened. We listened to what their problems and challenges were, and we, we built a product that solved those challenges. Mm -hmm. um, but over time, we've also had to figure out, we support you know many different projects and many different parachains. One of the hardest challenges has been um, taking our existing product and making sure we we equally kind of improve everyone else we kind of help everyone we we build uh features that everyone benefits from and that's a product management challenge another one is adding support for new chains every new chain is a is a, is a different mindset it's a different way that um data is stored in the chain it's a different terminology so where polka dot we talk about blocks and extrinsics and events um, Ethereum, they talk about blocks and transactions and logs. Um, Cosmos, they talk about blocks, events, uh, calls and messages. You know, there's all these different terminology that goes around and understanding and learning all these things. So when we talk to someone in, in Cosmos, we can have a discussion with them about, uh, about subquery, just like when we talk to someone in, in Polkadot. That's been a big challenge for us. Um, because we're seeing a lot of our customers wanting to build an aspect of their product in Polkadot, but also want to build somewhere else as well. A lot of people are building, having this multi-chain view of the world. And that's something that I guess we've had from day one when we started in Polkadot. Because from day one, we always knew that we had to support, you know, unlimited numbers of Polkadot networks, of substrate networks. Um, other challenges are scaling, right? Building a team, um, a big team. We're over almost at 20 people working at Subquery, talking to everyone, people remote around the world. So um, making sure that we're all on the same page and we're working efficiently and effectively and we're all working in the exact same direction. You know, no one's off mm -hmm. to the side doing something different. We're all rowing in the same direction. It's important. Um, so there's lots of different challenges, I guess. All these come under the big theme of, of building a company or a startup in, in, in Web3. Um, it's very hard. And I think a lot of people out there think that you can just start a, a, a company, you can start a project, you can write a white paper, you can raise some money, and you can say good luck, you know, let's see if it works. Um, but you really have to kind of work hard. It's a lot of hours, um, a lot of time, a lot of, um, a lot of stress, but um, that's mm -hmm. all part of the fun. And um, we've come a long way since then. Yeah. 
and uh, overcoming challenges of involves collaboration. Uh, can you talk about some strategic partnerships uh, Security has formed or is planning to form? Yeah, so you look at a team out there in, in, in Polkadot ecosystem, I don't think there are many teams that we haven't talked to, we haven't worked with in the past, we haven't, we haven't um, engaged with. Um, we are, we've talked to pretty much everyone in the ecosystem and we've done some work with most teams in the ecosystem. Um, so a lot of people ask me, like, what is a standard customer or partner of Subquery? And it's a very hard question to answer because Subquery is such a generic kind of mm -hmm. fundamental tool that everyone really needs, whether you're building an application, whether you're analyzing data, when you're whether you're building a, like a like a, um, a data analytics platform, you kind of need or could use subquery. So, for example, applications. Let's look at those. So, if you're think of any different vertical of applications, so wallets, Nova Wallet, Fearless Wallet, um, we've worked with very closely. Talks like explorers, like Subscan, um, we've worked with in the past. I'm um, talked to different DeFi products like Akala. Akala's in front entire front ends built on subquery. Talk to bridges, Fala use us for their chain bridge and many other services. Um, NFT platforms, there's so many NFT platforms on Moonbeam and Asta that use subquery to show NFTs in their in their platform. Um, mm -hmm. Other applications like bots, you know, like to send notifications to Telegram groups or Discord servers. We work with many of those um, on all different ecosystems. Um, we also work with our analytics providers. We've done a lot of work with like Web3Go. Um, a project that shows and presents data from across Polkadot um, easily and, and fast. We've worked with researchers out there trying to understand and analyze the crowd learns of, of, of Polkadot. So mm -hmm. yeah, all these different things we've done work with. Um, and so it's kind of hard to point to one or two partners as like, we're really happy about that because it's not just one or two partners, there's, there's tens if not hundreds of partners using sub mm -hmm. somewhere in the tech stack. Um, as, a, as a fundamental low-level tool that everyone needs. Yeah, um, uh, you know, partnerships certainly plays a crucial role, but so does the community. So how do you engage with your with the community and uh, what role does it play in subquery? Yeah, the community is absolutely like really important. I think a lot of people forget about the community. It's an afterthought mm -hmm. sometimes for some people. Um, we're very careful to always bring the community along with us on our journey, to always communicate clearly um, and concisely exactly what we're building and why we're building it and what you can expect from it and what it means to our customers, if not our community. Um, one of our challenges is that we build a very technical product. It's a very technical um, infrastructure piece. And mm -hmm. so explaining the value of that to our community is hard but it's mm -hmm. worth doing. It's very worth doing. We mm -hmm. put a lot of effort into that. And you can mm -hmm. see that's why like, I take a long time to explain how does subquery work because you have to kind of kind of start from you know the top. Mm -hmm. um, so the community is really, really, really important for us. We do a lot of engagement with the community on Twitter, uh, but most of our community is based in Discord. Um, we do a lot of work with Discord. We've got a very busy Discord server. I think it's about 65,000 people on the Discord channel. Um, and those are builders, those are community members, those are ambassadors, um, and so forth. Um, we're making sure we communicate what's happening, keep everyone up to date with what's happening, um, because it's very, very important for us as a company and as a project. Mm -hmm. um, as we conduct our composition, I want to thank you for valuable insight on Subquery. We are excited to see how the project process in the future uh, uh before we wrap up uh what would you uh, like to say to developers or enterprises considering using uh security yeah absolutely so the first step like reach out to us just <laughs> you'll probably find my details we'll probably put a link to my telegram name um or us on twitter just reach out to us the first step you should always do is that we're always happy to hear about how you're planning to what you're planning to build or um um, what you're thinking about building, because we might be able to support you in any way. We might be able to point out previous people that have done something similar or, or example projects that will work and help you and save you a lot of time. Mm -hmm. There are teams that have come to us and said, um, and we've managed to get in touch with them at the right stage of their development journey. Mm -hmm. And um, I had one of them tell me, James, I was so happy you reached out because you saved me weeks worth of development. 
Mm -hmm. So always reach out, ask us. We're very friendly. Us, we're New Zealanders, so we're very, very friendly. Um, um, and we're always happy to hear what you're planning to do and, 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 and talk to you and, and, and talk and discuss different ways that you could do that. Um, in terms of developers and enterprises, sub -career, we've got so many customers now um, and we've got so many customers across all these different ecosystems. Um, we're really now optimizing the performance, the scalability of sub -career. Um, mm -hmm. So now is the perfect time to join us. If you're an existing user of the graph um, or mm -hmm. other players out there, other indexes, we can help you migrate. Um, we can show you and prove you that sub is faster, it's more feature rich, mm -hmm. it's more reliable, and the decentralized network is going to be better for you um, in terms of your project. So reach out and talk to us. We're doing a lot of work out there. Um, we're coming to a more and more chains. Um, soon we'll be at the most chains of any indexer out there. Um, but it's an exciting time to be with Subquery. And um, yeah, I guess it's the summary. It's just come talk to us. We'd love to talk to you. Um, we'd love to hear what you need to do. And that's the summary of what we do at Subquery. We always listen, listen to our customers, listen to our partners, because that's how Subquery started, listening to the right people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK, uh, thank you so much for your time today and for the enlightening conversation. Uh, we are excited to see how Subcurry will continue to shape the Polkadot ecosystem and Web3. Uh, we wish you and the Subcurry team the best in the future, uh, in the future uh, endeavors. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kirsten. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Perkin. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the timing is perfect. Thank you. <laughs>